together with Mr. Ramakar for the African as it pleases the court, my lord, I uh, appear with my learned friend, Ms. May, for the respondent. <coughs> my lord, uh, <coughs> the applicant, the NC, seeks leave to appeal to the Supreme Court of Appeal, alternatively a full bench of this division, uh, against the whole of your uh, judgment and order. Lord, I... I'm not sure uh, as to the approach your Lordship would like to take to the matter. Uh, I am uh, willing to argue it uh, in full, but... Um, please go, please go ahead, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, my Lord. <coughs> the, my Lord uh, there have been various issues raised in my learned friend's heads, and uh, which I will deal with in the course of my address. I don't intend to be too long. Uh, you have heard of much of it before. Uh, my Lord, insofar as the preliminary points taken by my learned friends are concerned on the question of urgency uh, and, and the appealability of that finding, my Lord, the, the fact is that your Lordship dismissed the application and, dis and considered the merits and made a final order, and that makes it appealable. You did uphold the urgency objection, but as the matter has not been struck from the roll, we cannot come before this court again, and therefore the matter is clearly appealable. Uh, as to, um, there is also a suggestion that the yes. matter... Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Um, in terms of the, the order being appealable, um, the issue of, or the dispute as regards the, the name, um, that aspect wasn't uh, dealt with definitively in the in the judgment, not so. Uh, it was. My Lord, your, your Lordship dismissed the application. Yes, no, no, I dismissed the application, but in so far as the, the judgment is concerned. Um, you, you dealt at length with the, the dissimilarity of the marks, the services, yeah. you made a finding on the merits. But I, I made no finding in so far as the for use of better term, the, the ownership of the name. Uh, yes, my Lord, your, your Lordship uh, said that that was not a matter that could be decided yeah. on paper. Yes. Yes, my Lord. But, uh, but uh, your Lordship nonetheless dismissed the passing off claim. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the fact that your Lordship didn't consider that particular issue doesn't mean that it's not appealable. It, it is appealable. As regards the... Uh, the allegation that the matter is uh, moot because the elections have come and gone, my Lord, the, the trademark infringement is continuing. As in all trademark cases, trademark infringements are continuing wrongs. There will be future elections, there will be by-elections, there already have been by-elections. There will be fundraising and conferences. All of these issues involve tra will involve trademark infringement and passing off. The use of the mark MK will continue into the future. Okay, just go a bit slowly, please. Yes. So there will be, as I say, my Lord, future elections and by-elections, fundraising and conferences, and, and all of that is going to involve the use of the MK logo and the MK party name. And that continued future use will continue to erode on the goodwill that the ANC says it enjoys in the name and Quante C. And it, that goodwill will be eroded to the point where it has no value at all, at least insofar as the hands of the ANC. <coughs> it is... not correct on what to say that our case was based exclusively <coughs> on trademark infringement and passing off in the lead-up to the 2024 elections. That formed an important part of the case and it was the basis upon which the urgency of the case was argued but the case was never limited to this one. The, the case was never limited to uh, to trademark infringement that occurred prior to the 2024 elections uh, we made that clear in paragraphs 
into ALIA, my lord, but paragraphs 83 to 89 of the founding affidavit and 103 to 109 of the founding affidavit, where the causes of action are... Sorry, 103. Uh, yes, my lord, 103 is the passing off. <coughs> we can deal with that first. <coughs> Page 49. And what you will notice, my Lord, if one reads paragraphs 103 to 109, is that there is no mention at all of the election in 2024. And it is under the heading, the first respondent's conduct. It is that conduct which gives rise to the cause of action. And it was not specific to the 2024 elections. Of course, it involved conf consumer confusion, well, it, electoral confusion in the lead up to those elections. Uh, that was part of, that is, of course, part of the case. But the conduct about which we complain is an ongoing one. It is the continued use of Encontro uh from now uh, until, you know, and, and, and into the future. So it's not correct that the matter has become moot or uh, because the 2024 elections have occurred. It's also not correct that our case was limited to the 2024 elections. It is a case based uh, on a continuing wrong, uh, which uh, w we say it merits the attention uh, of an appeal court. So the, the point is made um, by the respondents that the basis on which the leave to appeal is sought differs from the case which the applicant has made out in its founding affidavit. What do you say to that, Mr. Mayor? Uh, my Lord, I, that's exactly why I'm pointing you to those paragraphs. Because in those paragraphs, which is, and, and similarly for uh, trademark infringement, my Lord, 80, paragraphs 83 to 89, Question that I'm asking I, I, I appreciate that. Is okay. where does it appear in these paragraphs, uh, from paragraph 83 onwards, that the concern of the applicant is not limited to the 2024 elections? But let, let's, let us read. Well, I, ha I haven't finished yet, Mr. Uh, Mayor. But but it's a continuing wrong yeah. that needs to be arrested. Well, Lord, uh, with respect, that is a self-evident proposition because for so long as the, um, the mark is continuing to be used, there is continuing harm. Trademark infringement doesn't go away just because the election has passed. And <coughs> paragraph 87, I have demonstrated that the ANCs and Quanto is well known in South Africa and indeed globally. The first respondent, that's the MK party, has gone to some lengths to create a non-existent association between the ANCs and Quanto Cesar and itself. To this end, the first respondent's apparent most vocal supporter and apparent member of the ANC has drawn some non-existent association between the ANC and the first respondent. None of that, my Lord, is limited <coughs> to the 2020. In fact, it's got nothing really to do with the 2024 election. It's about the continued association between uh, the MK party and the ANC and its history. 88, the former president is reported to have said a vote for the f first respondent is to rescue the ANC from the outside. I hasten to add that at this gathering, the infringing logo of, of the first respondent was on full display. In fact, when he uttered the words, the former president was clad with a t-shirt fully displaying the infringing trademark. So those are examples of conduct that will continue into the future. 89. It is clear from the above utterances that the first respondents, that the use of the first respondents mark is likely to take unfair advantage of 
or be detrimental to the distinctive character or repute of the ANC's well-known trademark. Th those are all allegations which apply, uh, which continue to apply uh, today. <coughs> the same is true, I don't want to read it all, of paragraphs 103 to 109, all of which relates to the sorts of examples, uh, well, they, they include examples of use of the Encontro Sees remark, which are not going to stop simply because the election has come and gone. Yeah. On the question of jurisdiction, my lord, your lordship uh, <coughs> made, certainly, as far as we are aware, it is the first time my Lord, that a High Court has found that it does not have the jurisdiction to determine a trademark infringement in passing off case. That, that has never happened before, and with respect, that, have, that on that basis alone, we submit there are uh, there are uh, there is at least uh, there is at least a reasonable prospect that another court it, may differ it, with you on that. But Mr. Madid, aren't you aren't you being selective? or taking it out of its context. The, the context in which that finding was made was in the context that this was an election matter that fell within the purview of the electoral court. Yes, well, well that, that was... And then, then effectively, yes. what, what you would have been asking me to do <coughs> was to split the matter to, to find that certain parts belonged in the electoral court and then on the same papers that um, this court had uh, jurisdiction to deal with the trademark uh, aspects. No, my lord, that is how you, you saw it, yes, my lord. But we were never asking for it. We never, you, you will recall, my lord, that I argued strenuously that this is not an electoral matter. Uh, yes, is, no. Yes. Uh, so, my lord, we weren't asking for the same relief on the same papers. Uh, we we didn't contend that this was an electoral matter. We maintained from the outset that this was an intellectual property matter. Yes. If you fail that, that um, uh, that if you don't get past the hurdle that this was an uh, this was a matter that belonged in the electoral court, then the rest of the debate becomes academic. Not so. That is so yes. But with respect, my Lord, we we <coughs> we, we differ yes, uh, yeah, strongly, I my Lord. <laughs> uh, I don't want to put it any higher, higher than that, my Lord. It, it, it's no different. It, your Lord, the, the essence of your Lordship's finding was that because the ANC had raised this issue of the trademark infringement in that electoral court, in those electoral court papers, it was some on some basis prevented from now bringing a trademark infringement case in the High Court, or a passing off case in the High Court. Lord, we, we, we differ uh, for a number of reasons. But firstly, Lord, the fact that the ANC raised those objections in that forum does not serve to vest that forum with jurisdiction to determine the trademark infringement in passing off. It actually happens quite frequently. Uh, that, for example, somebody raises a competition law issue in a high court and actually the high court says, no, you're in the wrong place, you need to go to the competition tribunal. The fact that you raised it in the high court does not prevent you going to the competition tribunal. So your lordship is correct, it was raised. But, none of, but no, the fact that it was raised in that forum is not a basis upon which to deny uh, the ANC's right to approach this court for relief. The second point, my lord, is that uh, we, where we submit respectfully that your, your Lordship erred is that once it, your Lordship found that the High Court does have jurisdiction to determine trademark infringement and passing off assets and must, then it is required to consider it. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm with you that the High Court, in terms of the, the proper interpretation, has what I'm trying to 
uh, ascertain from you in the context of appeal is practically how would that have applied in the context of this case if I maintained that the uh, that the electoral court was the appropriate forum for the resolution of the matter. Well, my lord, you, you that would be the end of it. The appropriate forum. If, well, you would no, my lord. With respect, you can't, with respect, deny or, or refuse to exercise your jurisdiction, which you admit you have simply because you think it would be better placed elsewhere. Once your Lordship accepts that you have jurisdiction to determine, you are required to exercise it. The only basis on which you could not have done so was raised judicata, and there is no suggestion of that here. So, uh, uh, and my Lord, you know, this, this is not, well, although this was the first time this arose in the electoral context, <coughs> It is not, as we've pointed out in the heads that we filed, it does happen. This, this regulatory, uh, this interaction between regulatory and high court matters uh, does happen. So, for example, uh, there are cases in which pharmaceutical products have been approved by the Medicines Control Council, including on the basis of whether their names are confusingly similar to other pharmaceuticals on the market. And the Supreme Court of Appeal said that is entirely irrelevant. They decide trademark infringement in possible cases. And the same we submit it ought, ought to have applied here. <coughs> the, the fact of the matter is, my Lord, that neither the IEC nor the Electoral Court can make findings on questions of trademark infringement and passing off. They have no regard to what is on the trademarks register. They have no regard to common law rights, they consider, and this is clear from page 8 of your Lordship's judgment, they consider only whether the applicant's name is similar to another party's name. That is a very limited inquiry and doesn't come nearly as close at, uh, it and doesn't therefore uh, ventilate the trademark infringement and passing off issues which we bring before this court. Also, my Lord, Neither the IEC nor the Electoral Court can grant the interdictory relief that we seek in this application. All it can do is deregister a party or refuse to register a party. It cannot stop that party using the trademark. So, for example, my Lord, if uh, the organization, let's hypothesize that the IEC or Electoral Court had in fact said that uh, Mkondo Asizu was not allowed to be registered, because its name was was inappropriate or for some, on some basis, that would not stop them using the name in in in, in public. They could carry on calling themselves in Quanto Caesar as an organisation. That's where trademark infringement is much broader than than anything that the that the IEC or the Electoral Court can do. It is to stop the use of the name entirely that a person brings a trademark infringement. Passing, uh, or passing off claim. The IEC and the Electoral Court can't grant that. So, my Lord, it, it, it is, uh, we, we disagree um, strongly, my Lord, with your Lordship's finding that the Electoral Court was the appropriate forum. It could never have uh, granted the relief that the ANC seeks in this matter. And uh, the fact that it was raised in that forum is not. It does not, has no bearing on whether you, your Lordship has jurisdiction. And finally, once your Lordship found you had jurisdiction, it ought, with respect, to have exercised it. And we say, therefore, there are strong grounds, or uh, good reason to believe that the Nobel Court will differ with, you, uh, with your Lordship's finding uh, insofar as jurisdiction is concerned. Mr. Maddox, just going back to the notice of motion. Yes. Um, 1.2. was for relief that the first respondent in Hunter Sisre party um, is interdicted from using the the logo. Yes. Yeah, the warrior and the shield logo. Then one point three 
is the name, the use of the name. Indeed, so, in essence, what you contended for is that not only should it change its name, but also change its logo. Indeed. And you'll recall that uh, at the time when uh, the matter was argued, I inquired from you practically what effect that would have. And you said, well, it would mean taking down all of their, their banners and election paraphernalia mm -hmm. in total, because you couldn't have one without the other. Indeed. Okay. And that's still what you, you asked for. Indeed. Well, of course, they've taken the banners down now anyway. Yes. Um, but yes, we will ask, we, we would seek an order. So it's literally an order expunging their name. Indeed. But or preventing them from using their name, yes. From preventing them from using the name in quanto Caesar. We would require them to change the name. And the logo. It happens, my lord. Political parties do change their name. <coughs> I don't think by court order, though, Mr. Marriott. Well, it's no different to a trader being told that they have to change, change their name. <coughs> and, and just while we're on the notice of motion, my lord, again, just on back to this jurisdiction point, you know, none of the relief that we seek, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1 1.5 damages could be granted. Um, on the question of locus standi, um, yes. we submit that your lordship, lordship, lordship erred with respect in, in finding that there had been a vesting of rights. <coughs> um, we, we, we also uh, disagree with respect that that section 19 of the Constitution was invoked because uh, nothing about the relief that prevents uh, the, the first respondent uh, from forming a political party, participating in the activities of the political party, recruiting members, or campaigning for a political party or cause. It, section 19, as we've said in the application, does not guarantee the right of every citizen to form a political party having a name that infringes upon the rights of others. And nor does it guarantee the right to campaign under such a name. And the point we make simply is change the name and you can exercise your Section 19 rights uh, at will. So we disagree with respect to the that, that the Section 19 was invoked. We also disagree that a registration uh, at the IEC or uh, renders a political party immune to trademark infringement and passing off cases. Uh, I mean, consider, for example, my lord, uh, or hypothesize that the, this trademark had never been assigned from legacy projects to the ANC. Legacy projects has no locus in the electoral court. It would have to be in the, high court, yeah. in the high court. So it cannot be so that the registration of a tra uh, that the registration uh, at the IEC renders one immune or vests rights in a political party which over shadow or over or trample upon those of, of trademark right? <coughs> and it also is with respect there's no basis to say that the the rights of a political party that owns a trademark are any different to those of an ordinary person on the street the point we make is on, on the locus standards this. when the mk party was registered as a political party in in September last year, there was no vesting of rights that happened for two reasons. One is because that registration does not render the political party immune to trademark proceedings, as I've said. And the second is that at the time they were registered, your lordship focused on the trademark uh, assignment, the fact that it had come after the registration. 
But at the time that they were registered, of course, legacy projects owned that trademark. Yes. And those rights were not extinguished by the registration of the MK party and the goodwill for the passing off claim vested in the ANC. And yes, so there can but, be no... But the, the, the vesting of those rights with legacy prior to the assignment to the ANC. Yes, my Lord. Uh, what is the effect of that? Well, the point I'm making, my Lord, is that you cannot, uh, you cannot acquire rights as the first respondent contends that it, it did when it got registered, which when, when the, the very acquisition of those rights mm -hmm. tramples upon and extinguishes the, the pre-existing rights of others. So how can it be that because they got registration, they are now no longer infringing legacy projects rights? Yes, but legacy projects didn't enter the fray to oppose... Well, but, 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 to oppose... Um, legacy d projects at the time didn't institute any action in the High Court to protect its right. Of course not, but its yes. rights were not extinguished. It can't be. I mean, my Lord, it, 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 I mean, the, the mere fact that a political party is registered... But, but you said that the infringement occurred at the time of the registration. <coughs> well, Indeed, well, it started yes. then. And the infringement being vis-a-vis -vis the MK party and legacy at well, the time at of registration. Time, yes, yes, it yes. would have been infringement. My point, the point, my lord, is that one cannot acquire rights which are in which which contravene the rights of others. In other words, which are in conflict with pre-existing rights of others. And it was in conflict pre-existing rights of others. It was in conflict with the pre-existing rights in the trademark, which at that time was registered in the name of legacy, and it was in conflict with the ANC's rights of goodwill, which vested in the name. <coughs> and, and just to round off, we're going back to the first point. The effect of your findings, my Lord, is effectively that those rights trademark rights and the common law rights were extinguished by the registration of the IEC. In which respect, we, we say that, that that is a finding which, uh, which is likely to be, uh, which another court may well come to a, a different conclusion. Those are the preliminary issues. <coughs> um, So far as the, 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 the trademark issues proper are concerned, uh, my Lord, under section, the, the case under th section 341A, your Lordship found that the green background was sufficiently distinctive. Uh, my Lord, we, we, as we pointed out, that is not always used, and in any event, uh, it's not sufficient to distinguish. Uh, the two marks because the ANC uses green too. And as I've uh, said before your Lordship at the at previous hearing, it's not limited to use in any particular colour, the, the trademark registration, and for that reason as well, uh, that finding with respect we say was, was incorrect. Um, on the question of whether the services are similar, again my Lord, we submit there's a prospect that another court will differ in with respect to your views as to the scope of class 41. That is again a novel issue, not one that has been considered by our courts before. The, the, the political, uh, the extent to which political activities such as campaigning, conferences and the like fall within the scope of class 41 is something that another court may reach a different conclusion to that of your, your lordships. <coughs> then my Lord, insofar as the, on the question of confusion, we, we your Lordship will, recur, will recall, um, and, and we had this debate uh, in the last round Lord, as to where confusion takes place. And your Lordship has a, had a particular focus in the judgment, 
are on the ballot box. But as I explained, worship and we maintain is the position. Confusion takes place not only at the ballot box. Campaigning is a process of education. If, if you are educated through the campaigning of it is an association between one mark and another. It doesn't matter how similar those marks are. So it doesn't matter that when they get into the box they see ANC and MK. If they have been taught through campaigning and through the use of logos and through the use of trademarks that there is a link between those two marks, then confusion will arise. And it is precisely that. That is why they have adopted these marks. These are not, these are not marks that they plucked out of the air. These are very well known marks in these country in this country. They are indelibly associated with the ANC. The point was to create the association <coughs> with the ANC. The point was that the MK party will always be known as being in the same house as the ANC. And they chose these marks because that conveyed that message. So, my Lord, the fact that they then get into the, that a voter gets into the voting box or voting booth and sees the ANC and the MK is, by then, it's far too late. The confusion has already been sown because the link has already been created between those marks. And it is the use prior to the voting box in the, on the campaign trail that gives rise to the confusion and deception. And it will continue from now on at, at <coughs> every, in every parliamentary session, in every in every conference, at every uh, by-election, that association will continue. Uh, Mr. Matty, that, that point is made at, uh, right at the outset in your application for leave to appeal. Have I mischaracterized the applicant's case or as I look at it, my framing of the applicant's case is appears to be taken directly from the applicant's founding affidavit. I just want to get some clarity. Uh, sorry, my lord. Uh, I, I think where it's taken, I'm, I'm not sure which paragraph your lordship is referring 21, to. page 13 of the founding yes. affidavit. 21. Yes. So, my lord, this is under. So, this is this is where I started my submissions today. It's under the heading of urgency. Now, it is. I, I, need, I need to be understood. It is a part of our case, and it was a part of our case, and it was used to justify urgency that there would be confusion in the lead up and during the 2024 elections. That was a part of our case. But. And it was used as the basis upon which to justify urgency. But as I've explained, my Lord, when we deal with the conduct, the actual infringing conduct, and when you look at the notice of motion, when, which one can start from page 40 of the, uh, of the affidavit all the way through to page 51, this case is about a continuing wrong ongoing use in all contexts of the of the encompass of the it, <coughs> Just logically, my Lord, it, it would make no sense for the ANC to say, well, I'm, uh, I object to your use of the encompass these were marks before the election, but after that it's absolutely fine. And they never said that, my Lord. From page 40, your Lordship will see that the case was about the ongoing use of marks in all contexts. <coughs> and then finally on the question of confusion, we, we submit respectfully that, that the finding that, that the MK party would seek to disassociate itself is not one that was supported by the evidence. We, we quoted in the affidavit statements by the leaders of the MK party in which they actively sought to state in, to associate themselves with the MK, calling themselves one of the rooms within the ANC. Now, that is an association. And 
it is always the case in trademarks infringement and passing off cases that the the alleged infringer seeks to associate themselves because there are obvious and logical benefits to doing so. <coughs> then, insofar as Section 341C is concerned, in respect, we, we do contend that that is the section of the Act which doesn't require confusion or deception. It requires only that the marks be similar, that they be well known, and that they take unfair advantage of the well-known marks. And for the reasons... Sorry, that, that's under... 341C. Um, we've, we've dealt in our, in our heads of argument in paragraph 6 and 7. to say that the court ought to have found with respect that by adopting a similar mark, which is all the section requires, it's similarity and confusing similarity are different concepts. The MK party sought to do precisely that which the SCA found to be objectionable in Cape Cookies. Uh, in other words, they took adv unfair advantage of the power of attraction, the prestige, and the repute of the Encanto Caesar mark. And they... <coughs> We all know that that, that um, power, that power of attraction, had been built up with over a considerable period of time, with a considerable investment of not money in this case as much. Well, it is some money certainly, but in terms of uh, the struggle, and Cape Criti and, and and what Mkuntwa Caesar has done is chosen to to adopt that mark as its own. It's effectively taken it, so that it does not have to. Um, build up its own legacy. And we submit that that is a clear example of taking unfair advantage of a well-known mark. Um, my Lord, those, uh, obviously the passing off, <coughs> your Lordship found that uh, you were unable to determine who owned the, the controversies of mark. We, we submit respectfully, most of the submissions that I made to you uh, were in fact based on the respondents' evidence. And what is not in dispute is that the ANC is at least, and, and we say we are the sole, but at least a joint proprietor of the Goodwill. There may be other organizations like the PAC, uh, uh, but a joint proprietor is entitled to bring a passing off claim. Yes. So my Lord, for the, all those reasons, we submit that there are um, good prospects of success on appeal. We would ask for leave to appeal to the Supreme Court of Appeal. We do believe that this matter is uh, merits the attention of the Supreme Court of Appeal. It's obviously a, an enormous public interest in it, and there are novel issues of law. And we would therefore ask that leave be granted to the leave to the Supreme Court of Appeal with uh, costs to be costs in the appeal. And um, that would be a slight change from your um, your application for leave, where you seek leave to the SCA or alternatively to the full court of this division? Uh, 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 the alternative remains, but my, my, my primary submission is to the Supreme Court. Yes. yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Mpofu. Thank you, Madam Malot. If I may start before. <laughs> Thanks. That's good. My Lord, the, the, this application for leave to appeal, with the greatest respect, so, I'm sorry. My Lord, the, this application is um, dead on arrival. It's, it doesn't get off the starting blocks, my Lord. Uh, my learned friend uh, correctly 
uh, was trying to refrain from re-arguing the case, but he has ended up doing that. And I've listened to him very carefully. At least twice, minimum, he says that there's a reasonable prospect that another court may find differently. Of course, that's not the test. The test is not may. That was the old test. Since 2010, the test has been changed. It has been heightened, quote, unquote. And the reason exactly that uh, the legislature saw it fit to intervene and heighten the test was to stop hopeless appeals from passing through to, 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 to the test, that rather to the appeal courts to stop that floodgate. And this is a typical example of why the legislature did that. Because, my lord, if there ever was a hopeless appeal, this is one. There are, it, it's impossible, and I use that word advisedly, for this applicant to pass that heightened test in respect of all the hurdles in, in front of them. The Lordship correctly started with the uh, asking my, my learned friend regarding the preliminary points. Now, you know, preliminary points sometimes are called technical points. But here, we know that the preliminary points actually have an impact on the, on the merits. A, a, a serious impact at that. Because, let, let's just take an example. If the ANC does not have the local standing uh, to bring this matter, uh, let's just say that for, for a minute, then at the very same time, it cannot be the enforcer of the, of the trademark infringement. Let's assume there is a trademark infringement. But if that trademark infringement is not available at the, in the hands of the ANC, then that's the end of it. So that's a matter that cuts across the so-called uh, points in limine, but it also uh, goes into section 34 itself. Now, let's start right at the beginning. Why this is not appealable? My lord, your lordship did the correct thing of finding that the matter was not urgent. If your Lordship could have ended there, by the way. Could have just said, the matter is not urgent, goodbye. But your Lordship, because of the importance <coughs> of the matter, because there the, the, the might have been uh, further proceedings and so on, did what the, the SCA has always said must be done, that a court, even if it finds against the applicant in, in um, for, uh, on, on preliminary points, must nevertheless deal with the merits, because otherwise it prevents the court of, it's called the spillhouse rule, uh, it, it prevents the, the, uh, the SCA or any other court from having to deal with the matter as a court of first instance. So that's just a matter of judicial prudence, if you like. But it should not be abused to deny the fact that it was quite entitled simply to say this matter is not urgent and that's the end of it. <coughs> now, had your lordship done that, which your lordship was entitled to do, the matter would not be appealable. So it can't now <laughs> graduate to becoming appealable simply because your lordship also dealt with the merits uh, obita, so to speak, uh, in, 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 in for, for what I call for, for uh, reasons of judicial prudence. So that's the first issue, my lord. And the lordship did not just say the matter is not, is not urgent in a one-liner. Actually, your lordship went to great lengths to explain why the ANC, for months and months on end, did nothing to prosecute its so-called trademark infringement and only did so after the, the December 16 announcement by former President Zuma. The Lordship goes into that. I don't need to go to traverse that, that road. 
And we, we, we know, my Lord, and that's the reason why your Lordship went into that history, we know why they waited. It's because they were pursuing, rightly so, the, in the Electoral Commission, and they appealed, and they lost that appeal, and so on and so on. But that, all that could not have prevented them in September, or whenever they became aware of the infringement, or let's even say after the, the day after the assignment. Remember the assignment was done exactly so that they can acquire the rights, as, as my little friend says. Then you acquire the rights in September, and you do nothing until January of the following year. And the, so, and the, as if that is not enough, uh, then they say that the, so we say the agency is self-created, which is one, one issue. Which really comes to the to the nub of what we are about today is why then would they not have received um, uh, relief in due course? So what do they say to that, my lord? They say no, we could not re uh, get relief in due course because there are elections on the 29th of May. Fair enough. But now the case changes. So today we are told no. We could get uh, a relief in due course because this matter goes on forever. You know, there are by-elections, the 2029, 2034, whatever, there will still be the so-called continuing wrong. So the case cannot change according to, you know, the weather. It must uh, stay what it is. And that is why, my Lord, and, and this takes us to the issue of jurisdiction. Lordship will forgive me if I'm... I'm I'm jumping from one of these so-called preliminary points to the other because they're related. That's why, my lord, the basic law of this country, in Gaba, in Chirwa, all the cases that your lordship referred to, is that paragraph 75 of the Gaba case says that you determine jurisdiction according to the pleadings. So, you... you <laughs> You can't now plead the case from the bar, uh, you know, according to what stage of, of, the, of the electoral process we're in. That golden rule that says you determine the matter from the pleadings is the death of this application. Because your lordship asked a, a very pertinent question. Mr. Marriott, where in your papers talk about by elections of the future and so on and so on. No way. So that's something we hear of today. We, we are inviting my learned friend to answer that question when he replies. Where in these papers, not in, you know, we know that there will be other elections and so on. In these papers, where that do they deal with uh, the, the, this uh, new case of the future? And I'll tell you, my Lord, what, what, what they actually do. They deal with the, the, the present, uh, the present uh, uh, as, as in uh, pre-May um, 29. And then they even deal with the past, but they don't deal with the future. The present they deal with a paragraph 21 and 22. Your Lordship has already um, uh, referred my learned friend. Now, 21 and 22 completely uh, stops the debate because they say there is overwhelming public interest in ensuring that when the voters approach the voting booth, it's page 13, they are not confused as to the party which they are placing their trust in. It is a matter of clear public interest that any voter confusion, underline those words. So they have decided of course we know that the, 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 uh, the law talks about confusion they voluntarily decide to specify which confusion that they are talking about it's not the vo confusion of uh, soccer spectators or whatever, it's the confusion of voters so they are, they are bound by that self-confined uh, definition and um, 
And they say it's important that is clarified by your lordship before the elections takes place. Before the elections takes place. And then given that we're in electoral da 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 da. For it, is, it is for that reason that at 22 now, that the ANC requests that this court must attend to this matter urgently and expeditiously. Now, I say this, my Lord, and in fairness to my learned friend, they did allude uh, 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 the last um, sentence of, of 21. So it is therefore to the benefit of all parties that the matter be clarified before the general elections, as the next general election will only be held in five years. So that's the only allusion, if, 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 if you like. But they say it is for that reason that the ANC requests that this court must attend to this matter urgently. Now, we make this point in our heads, my lord. A case cannot be uh, based on a particular election and voter confusion and all those things for the purposes of urgency. But for the purposes of the merits, it's, it, it's something else. Because that, that urgency, there's no such thing as it's like uh, trying to unscramble the egg. It's an urgent application. It's one thing. Your Lordship dismissed the urgent application of the ANC. And that urgent application was premised on, on, on um, the May 29 elections. To make matters worse, my Lord, if you go to right to the end, uh, that's paragraph 50. Uh, my learned friend referred you to, uh, oh, 62, I'm sorry. Uh, it's, it's 50 of the, no, no, no. No, it's paragraph, uh, I'm sorry, did I say paragraph 50? Page 50, man. Paragraph, paragraph 107, I'm sorry. The Lordship was referred to this paragraph by my learned friend. But look what they say at 107. In fact, the first respondent has made various attempts to create a non-existent link between the NC and itself. Uh, the applicant has clear right in the form of its registered trademarks as well as common law rights to the name and contour of CISWA. The first respondent has infringed these rights. In other words, they have infringed the rights in the past, uh, according to them. That's why I say they cover the past and then they cover the, the pre-29 uh, May period, but nowhere as your Lordship uh, uh, pointed out, and as I've asked my friend, my learned friend to do, do they allude to the, to the, to, 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 to the future? Yeah. Now, that then also uh, finalizes the issue of jurisdiction in the following way, my Lord. My learned friend is, 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 is correct, of course, that the High Court generally has the right to deal with trademarks that, that, that nobody's going to argue against that. But that's not what we're debating here. It is like, my Lord, if you say, I'm bringing a labor matter here, and then I say, no, but the High Court has jurisdiction to deal with contracts. So I'm, I'm, I'm based, of course, the High Court has a, a jurisdiction to deal with contracts as the High Court has jurisdiction to deal with trademark infringement. But if my pleadings show that actually what I'm complaining about is an unfair labor practice, then I must go to the Labor Court. That is, by, by the way, the reason why specialist courts are, are created. It is effectively, if you like, to, to eat away from the jurisdiction, the inherent jurisdiction of the, of the, of the High Court. Yes, but the... It the point which uh, is made by Mr. Marriott is that the applicant would not have been able to get in the electoral court the relief that is sought in the notice of motion. That's if I understand his argument correctly. Yes, and yes, yes it is, my lord. But, but, but that's, that's not correct, my lord. Remember the history of this matter. They are the ones who decided to split the baby, so to speak. It's not even a, a secret. Like literally on the same day, the 9th of January, they decided to issue two matters. 
One in the electoral court, one in this court. On the, literally on the same day, both affidavits signed by Mr. Mbalula on the same day. Now, that might have been for tactical reasons or whatever, but it has uh, backfired because both courts, in a way, found that they don't have jurisdiction. It looks like they might, they should have <laughs> swapped the matters around. But be that as it may, my lord, the issue, and your lordship did ask this question, I can't remember how your lordship framed it, was wh when you are splitting uh, these matters as, as you are doing now, which one becomes which? Because, and I, I'll tell you, um, my lord, why part of, the, of that strategy was clever lawyering, so to speak. They understood that to come here for the, for the um, trademark infringement, one of the issues is going to be unauthorized use. Now, and, and, and the, the, this actually is, is a shortcut to this whole case. So they thought, okay, let's first do the deregistration, and then the deregistration will then deprive us of the defense that the, the use is authorized. Unfortunately, they failed because the, the deregistration case uh, was dismissed before we came for your lodge, I think a few days before we came to your lodge. Now, once you do that, my lord, then how can you get a, a, an order in this court for whatever relief you seek, but which is hinged on the on, on where the element of unauthorized use is is a, is an essential element? So, assuming that the deregistration case uh -huh. went in favour of the ANC. Would the ANC's would the ANC's case before this court have been on a much stronger footing? Absolutely, absolutely, my lord. Because it, um, remember the the, the the I call it the overlapping uh, element. Because remember, unauthorized use is is required for both section thirty four one A and for thirty four one C. So it would I, I could not have then come before your lordship and say. Uh, well, the, the use is authorized. Uh, because your lordship would have said, well, to the extent that it was authorized in September, it has now just been unauthorized by the, by the electoral court. But once they lost that case, my lord, they cannot with a straight face come before your lordship and say that the use of the logo and the mark and the name and all those things is unauthorized because it has just been authorized yesterday by the by the law by a court of law uh, of of uh, five charges. So it matters not. Of course, Mr. Marriott is right that uh, the the um, if you like the, the pure the pure trademarks case could not have been decided in the electoral court, but you can't pure. I, you're the one who, 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 who scrambled the egg. You can't then now want to, to, to unscramble it. Because, my lord, it's not, you know, they blame your lordship for um, for, for, for uh, as it were, not distilling the, 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 the trade, the pure trade max case. Again, my lord, they must not blame your lordship, they must blame Mr. Malula. At page 48 of bundle B, your lordship will remember it's FA6. Are you talking about the electoral court? Yes, yes, uh, those papers, my lord. Forty-six years. Oh, Forty-eight, my lord. Yes. It is the ANC, not your lordship, that makes the the linkage. 
Remember, at this stage, there's no high court application, my lord. This is a letter that he's writing to the chairperson of the IEC, uh, the date your lordship will find at page 50, 20th September 2023. Long, four months before they come before your lordship. And he says, the, the last sentence, therefore, any political party registered under this name and the symbol that is inextricably linked to it will, by necessary implication, deceive or confuse voters as contemplated in section 161B of the Act. What Act is he talking about? The Electoral Commission's Act. So they, they link the, their com complaint to, to this, but here's the, 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 the uh, highlight on the next page, page 49. The distinguishing mark or symbol of Mkondo's party as it appears in Annexure B has been registered in terms of section 29 2 of the Trademarks Act with effect from 20th August 2014 for a period of 10 years uh, and so on. And then, uh, if you just go right down, my lord, as such, yeah. As such, the registration of Mkondo says as a political party using this symbol and the name that is inescapably associated with it would be in violation of these intellectual property rights. What these there refers to legacy projects. So he says it was registered by legacy projects for 10 years and so on and so on, and it would be in violation of these uh, intellectual property rights. So it's not your uh, lordship, it's not MK party who introduces the uh, symbiosis between the, the, the electoral act and the, and the trademarks uh, violation. That's how the case is pleaded by them. And that is why, my lord, we advisedly included the papers of the electoral court to, uh, in front of, of your lordship at the risk of overburdening the record because we did not want this party to, to, to do one thing in one court in Bloemfontein and then do another thing in the court in Deben, hoping that this, one, the, this court doesn't uh, get sight of what is happening in the other court, which is really what, the, what they were trying to do. So, so, my lord, um, as I say, uh, I'm sorry to repeat this example. It's the same example, my lord. So, if I went to the High Court with a labor matter, I can't then say to the High Court, okay, well, I, I know it's a labor matter, but um, what I'm asking for you is an interdict, and you have uh, jurisdiction. Simply, it, it now stops being, being a labor matter. Because an interdict in a labor matter, as I say, it's the same, it's the same thing. So, you really can't separate it. So those are the preliminary issues, my lord, of agency, the impact of the agency issue, the issue, issue of jurisdiction. When it comes to local stand, my lord, that's the killer. There is no way out. How do you come out of the reality, my lord, considered by them that as at the time of the registration, which is the 7th of September, the rights such as they, they were did not belong to the ANC. Assuming the assignment is valid for the purposes of this uh, discussion, that assignment on their own version kicks in on the 23rd of September. And the issue of local stand, my lord, for it cannot be separated from the other issue we raised of non-joinder. I know that your lordship didn't deal with it specifically, but that's because we, we said that to your lordship. We said those two issues are intertwined. But the importance of why they're intertwined is this, my lord. You can't do what my learned friend is trying to do now. You, you have to make a choice. You either say, yes, the, the, those rights belong to legacy project, at least for that two week period. Uh, and then the ANC bought them, as it were, uh, uh, after the assignment. If 
you concede that, as my learned friend does this morning, then you, why did you not join Legacy Project? Because clearly, at least for part of the infringement uh, portion, they were the holders of the right. And if my learned friend is correct, he says his last submission was, at the very least, they were joint proprietor. Well, we know the law that if they are joint owners of any property, uh, corporeal or incorporeal, okay. then both of them have to be part of the of the case. So that's what my lonely friend is tying himself into knots that are inextricable, because you solve one problem and the other problem uh, arises by conceding that a legacy project was the owner. Then th that means that they are conceding the non-joiner point if they are joint owners as they now describe themselves. But there's something even more fundamental, my lord, uh, in this. The, the ANC, and I don't understand this because I think Mr. Mbalula, either um, it's a slip of the tongue or, or it doesn't understand the history of the, of the ANC and FMK. We have said, my lord, that we, 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 we can never deny the fact that there's an association between MK and the ANC. That's not what this case is about. What we say, my Lord, is that, now let's go to the so-called pure trademarks law that my learned friend wants us to do. In pure trademarks law, the, the, the uh, proprietor must have exclusive uh, ownership. I'm now, let's put aside for, for a minute the issue of joint ownership but exclusive and distinctive. Those are uh, some of the, of, the, of, of, the, of the elements. We have said to them, no, forget what we have said. They have considered that the MK, Umkonto Wesis, in 1961, was formed by what they call the Congresses, right? We explained that in our ans answering affidavit, what are the Congresses? The Congresses meant the ANC, the South African Indian Congress, the Congress of uh, uh, Democrats, and, uh, and SACTU. Um, and the SACP was not part of the, of the, of the Congress alliance. But Mr. Nkofu, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yes, ma'am. Uh, obviously, don't want you to re-argue the case. Yes, I've yes, already no, found in your favor. Uh, okay, okay, yes. yes. I think no, no, let's no, no, just it, stick it, to the grounds it, of appeal. Yes, yes. Now, okay, my, my lord, I'm, uh, what I'm saying is this. You, you, you can't really argue the case in, um, in this kind of compartments uh, uh, that my learned friend wants, wa wants you to. If they concede, as they do here, that uh, the the, um, the 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 Unkonto Wesizo was formed by other people. Uh, I forget who they were. Then the the implication of that is that it cannot be a page of origin, because remember that's what uh, trademark law is about. You are protecting what you call the page of origin. You are the inventor in a way of 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 something. Um, and, and I think the point I've, I've already made, so they should have either joined, the SACP at least is, is the only one surviving uh, party of the, of the, of, of, of the, of what they call the founders of Mkondoesis. They even say that... Uh, but Mr. Mpofu, my, yeah. my decision doesn't deal with uh, the issue of non-joinder as a stumbling block no. for the applicant. Yes, no, I accept that, my lord. But I'm saying the reason why I am the one who invited your lordship not to, because I said it's intertwined with local standards. So that's why I'm dealing with it as, a, as part of the local standard. But be that as it may, my lord, my submission is I cannot go past any of the, of the preliminary points. And even if they could, they can't go past the appealability point. And then the third, the, the third point is that this, the matter is moot on these pleadings. It's now moot because the elections have come, they're gone. Uh, people are all over in legislatures and in Cape Town and everywhere. Um, so on these papers, the matter is moot. And your lordship knows that this, our appeal courts are very sensitive to this question of having an appeal that is brought there just for academic purposes or to satisfy somebody's ego and so on, where there is no 
a live dispute, really, uh, on the papers before them. What, what of Mr. Marriott's contention that um, if they are denied the opportunity to, to appeal the matter, uh -huh. um, their goodwill, goodwill in the name continues, and I use his words, to be eroded yes. into the future. What, um, what is available yes. in, in the hands of the ANC um, to prevent that if yes. that is taking place? Thank you, my lord. The answer to that is very, very simple. It goes back to the golden rule. You are bound by your pleadings. If the ANC feels that its so-called goodwill is being eroded going into the future, they must bring an application to court. It's very simple. You can't, <laughs> my little friend uh, accuses us of, accuses MK party of wanting to hang onto the coattails of the, of, of the ANC. Well, they want this case to hang, uh, or the infringement case which they should bring now, to hang onto the coattails of this case. You can't do that. An appeal is not a place where you want to now assert new rights. If they want to assert new rights, they must um, uh, bring another application. That's the recourse, my lord. Bring a fresh application. If we say in that application, no, it's res judicata, they can say, no, no, no. That case was confined to the period up to the 29th of May. Now, we, you are doing by-elections here and by-elections there, what have you. So, the answer is very simple. If they feel aggrieved like any other uh, litigant, they must litigate. We're here. We're ready for them. So that that's the the, the, the answer to that, uh, and so that's the end of the of the um, of the preliminary point. Now coming to the merits, my lord, I'm going to be very short because really the shortcut is is this. I'm going to only deal with two elements. Unauthorized use we've already dealt with. The second one is uh, in the course of trade. And the reason why I'm dealing with only those two is because those are the two that overlap between section 341A and 341C. So if they fail in those two, then we kill two birds with one stone, as it were. So I want to address unauthorized use again. In the course of trade. My lord, your lordship will remember this. I remember it as if it was yesterday. We said, okay, now show us, assume everything, the assignment is correct, you've got the, you are the registered proprietor, and so on. Wh which class? And they said, the class 41. And the Lordship said, well, we the, 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 what we are busy with here. And we, we had all agreed to frame it as electoral politics, as it were. And my learned friend said, no, it's there on the list. And he took the list, he looked, it was not there. And it's still not there today. And it will not be there next week. So the, 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 uh, if the element of in the course of trade cannot be met, could not be met then, and my learned friend was at pains, or, or rather uh, constrained uh, to consider even if not in so many words. Then how is that going to be suddenly cured in the SCA? At what point is it now going to be class 41? Um, and again, your lordship dealt extensively with this in the judgment to say that, the, the, so, uh, I think the, the last attempt was to say, well, it deals with Congresses, the, 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 the class, and therefore a political party also holds Congresses. I don't even know what that means. Yeah. But um, it was a, an ill-fated attempt, uh, nevertheless. And the point I'm making, my lord, is simply this. Remember, we are in the uh, application for leave to appeal. So in which world can we say it, there's a reasonable possibility that another court would find that Class 41 applies? It will never happen. I, I can put it that strongly. It will never happen. So why burden the higher courts with something that is stillborn and 
completely uh, dead on arrival at, at best. So I'll, I'll leave the 341A and 341C. Now let's go to the last point, which is a passing off. The passing off matter, my Lord, is the one that your Lordship, with the greatest respect, uh, dealt with uh, right from the beginning. When your Lordship said to us, please parties, can you give me the, lo the two logos of what will be in the, in the ballot box? That was the end of the passing off case. Because the issue of similarity uh, or, or, or dissimilarity, the so-called um, what's it called side-by-side -side analysis, completely uh, deals with that, with that. Because you can't you can't pass off at paragraph 65 of the judgment. Your lordship put the two logos um, literally side by side. Your Lordship will find that at 65 of your Lordship judgment, uh, page 34 of the typed version, where your Lordship has put umkonto with a logo, as it will appear in the in the um, in the ballot box, uh, in the ballot paper, sorry, and uh, the ANC logo. So. The issue of so-called voter confusion as it relates to the passing off is completely uh, uh, you know, destroyed by, by the so-called side-by-side uh, uh, analysis. But the, let's put aside the issue of similarity or dissimilarity and go to the goodwill, goodwill that was mentioned now. Now, I ask this, my Lord, as a rhetorical question. If the goodwill in the MK logo resided with the ANC all along, then why did they go and buy it from legacy projects? The act of buying, because that's what assignment is just a big word, but they want to buy the, 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 the goodwill from uh, legacy projects. Now that poses two serious stumbling blocks for them. One is, you can then come here to protect that you did, which you did not have and bought later, obviously. If it, it's a house, you can't say, well, I've come to buy the house, but I'm, I'm protecting it uh, uh, retrospectively. Your Lordship dealt with that. The quintessential law of trade backs is that a trade back cannot be retrospectively uh, uh, assigned then then the, the, the so the, 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 the goodwill argument is just um, uh, 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 fallacious we know that they did on, it's admitted that they disbanded in 1993 and then they allowed quote unquote legacy projects for nine years to appropriate exclusively the goodwill so if, if, if indeed this was a so-called pure trade max better, why did they allow legacy projects to go for nine years with their exclusive uh, 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 mark or logo? It is because it had been abandoned by them deliberately and uh, it can, that, that process cannot be, you, you can't erase that history, my Lord. Yeah. So whether you look at it of view of similarity, there's no passing off. And whether I look at it from the point of view of a reputation through goodwill, there's no passing off. And, and, and so that's the end of the case. The, last, the very last point, my Lord, is that in any event, the nature of the um, relief sought before your Lordship is, uh, is interdictory. And, um, and therefore, the, the, again, the, the harm the harm which they have um, uh, identified is confined to the pre-election period.
you can't now come and want to expand it later in the in the in the SCA or any any other court. It would be a tragedy, my lord, if we were to burden overburden the uh, any other court with uh, this matter. When the horses are the has left the station, uh, and I've run out of metaphors to describe <laughs> <laughs> to describe the the situation that we're in. So the, it, it really would just be for pure academic purposes to say, oh, well, wouldn't it be nice if, what would happen if a political, courts are not for that. That will be left to academics. The academics will analyze your lordship's judgment and say what they have to say, but not uh, to waste, waste our scarce judicial resources on this. As the court pleases me. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mpuf. Mr. Mary. <coughs> My lords, I won't, I won't be long. <coughs> On the question of urgency, my lord, I don't think I need to address you. <laughs> Your lordship gave an order, and uh, that order is appealable. Uh, your lordship dealt with the merits. As to the mootness, my learned friend uh, challenged me to say where the ongoing harm, the continuing harm, was pleaded. I did that in my opening address, my lord, from page 40 onwards. We don't refer to the election. And he didn't deal with that at all. And I would invite your lordship, just specifically within that paragraph, to have a look at page at paragraph one within that section, should I say, to have a look at paragraph one hundred and eight on page fifty. It says, my learned, my learned friend took you to one hundred and seven. It's where, where the point is made about the creating of a non-existent link. And then it says, the longer the conduct of the first respondent continues, the greater the likelihood of loss and damage to the ANC. There's no adequate remedy to prevent the first respondent's ongoing unlawful conduct other than an interdict. That's not limited in time to it suddenly stops, you know, when the May 2024 election happens. <coughs> On that point, and of course then he goes uh, to paragraphs 21 and 22, which again, we have explained, uh, r relate to why an urgent hearing was required. Everything we said, everything that was said in that context, we, we, we stand by with respect, because there was irreparable harm in the elections. But the fact that there was irreparable harm uh, doesn't mean that the infliction of the harm should be allowed to continue. So, my Lord... Uh, and then my learned friend used many metaphors, and he ran out of them to say that it was <laughs> that, that, it was <laughs> that, that it was academic, my lord. But they're still using the mark. Mr. Mayor, maybe one issue with you. Yes. Um, Mr. Mpofu says, well, if the case that you've brought um, is considered by at least this court to be confined to the 2024 election. I know you take a different view, obviously, and that's where we part ways. Um, if you wish to rein in the erosion of the, um, of the mark, of the goodwill that resides in the ANC through the name and the logo, your options are to institute a fresh action and it would not be a defense of res judicata because of my of the uh, of of the court's finding that this was confined this case uh, was confined to the may 2024 elections and therefore any subsequent case is not shackled by that what, what, what's uh, what's your, no, 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 with your respect? It, it would be res judicata. Your lordship, whether it's whether it's time bound or otherwise, yeah. the substance of what your lordship has found is that these marks are not confusingly similar. Your lordship has found that there's no unauthorized that the use is authorized. Your lordship has found that under section 341 c that there's no unfair taking advantage of the causes of action 
have been decided. We, we, we can't come again. Otherwise, my Lord, it would be open to every uh, infringer in a trademark case to say, well, I oh, know, but that was last year. I'm still using the same mark, by the way, this year, but that was about last year. It's nonsense, my Lord. With respect. It's really nonsense. So, my Lord, it, it's, it's, there's no time bounding of trademark cases. There's, similarly, my Lord, there was no splitting of matters between the uh, electoral court and and this court. There is different relief sought on different causes of action. And the deregistration case had no bearing on this case because it dealt with a different issue under a different act. And it would not have stopped in quanto <coughs> using the trademark. Like, nothing about that process would have stopped them using in quanto My learned friend, you put the proposition to my learned friend, well, it may have made our case stronger in this case. Well, even if that was so, it doesn't mean that we are debarred from getting relief that we seek from this court. It may help us to get the relief. On the question of jurisdiction, my Lord, uh, I explained in my first address that the fact that the ANC raised the trademark and those proceedings does not deprive you of jurisdiction. And as I understood my learned friend, he, he, he conceded that the electoral court would not decide the trademark issues. That's the end of that, that debate. On locus stando, my learned friend uh, calls it a killer point. Uh, with respect, I, I beg to differ. Um, he, he contemplates the joinder of legacy, which is not an issue that you even considered. Uh, it, it is never required that one uh, joins past uh, proprietors of trademarks in, in trademark infringement cases. The current proprietor is entitled as a matter of law under the Act to an interdict and damages, and the ANC is the sole owner of the trademark. He, he conflates in this regard what I said about the passing off and the joint ownership of goodwill and the common law rights with what I said about the trademark. The trademark is exclusively owned by the ANC and it and it alone is entitled to bring trademark uh, infringement proceedings. Then, uh, so my lord, the, the, the preliminary points uh, are ought to be no bar to the grant of leave to appeal. Uh, as regards the merits, uh, my lord, my own friend dealt relatively briefly with those uh, issues. He, he said he dealt first with authorization, uh, albeit that he dealt with it earlier. But, my Lord, it, it is, again, it's not something I have dealt with, but, but your Lordship found that this use was authorised by the IEC. Uh, it's the same point as the vesting of the rights point. It's not something the INC, IEC can authorise. As regards his other submission about in the course of trade, what he, what he uh, was referring to was the similarity or otherwise of the services, which, again, I have dealt with uh, in, in my opening uh, address. Uh, he inaccurately says that, some, that the services that uh, we relied on were not there. The correct position is that indeed some of the services were included in the NIS classification and we maintain that a different court may come to a different conclusion as regards the similarity of those uh, um, services. Finally, my Lord, on, on the question of passing off. Um, the, my learned friend says glibly that oh, when you have a joint owners of property you both have to be joined. And that's not the law in relation to trading. If I own the goodwill and somebody else owns a goodwill, we've given you the authorities in your heads uh, that, that a joint owner of a goodwill may uh, institute proceedings in its own name. So and there doesn't appear to be any material dispute that the ANC is at least a joint owner. In fact, my Lord, on this question of whether the ANC has established uh, the goodwill, one need only look in the answering affidavit of the Umkonto Sisu Party, par page 121, paragraph 19.16. It says, the narrative of the ANC also fails to make the crucial distinguish distinction between a trademark and a brand. And I must say, I'm still waiting <coughs> to, to learn what that distinction is, but the ANC 
may well have been associated with Encontro Cisre. That's its affidavit. And it follows on a long discussion about how the ANC was integrally involved, at the very least, through, throughout the, the history of the Encontro Cisre. It is at least a joint owner of goodwill, and a joint owner is entitled to bring proceedings in its own name. <coughs> and then finally, on the question of the test, uh, I, I've made my submissions regarding the comparison of the two marks in the ballot box. And I've explained that for passing off, that ignores the evidence which shows that the association uh, that is indeed sought to be drawn, including by the leaders of the MK party. But it's also the wrong test, and I just go back to this, the wrong test for trademark law. Trademark law requires a comparison only of the registered mark against that used by the, uh, by the proprietor. And the registered mark is the mark that is on the register of trademark that which is registered before the IEC. Uh, Lord, we, we have been in healthy debate for 90 minutes. Yes, thank if, you. if ever there was an indication of perhaps leave to appeal or to be granted, we submit <laughs> 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 that uh, there are indeed some issues that, uh, that we'll warrant further attention. We'll have to wait a little bit longer. I intend to, to reflect on, on the arguments and I'll hand down decision in due course. Parties will be advised. In due course, yes. Yes, judgment is reserved in that. Thank you. Court will rise. Thank <laughs> you.